Bernstein, founder and executive director of Soldiers to Sidelines. We are so excited that you're here with us tonight for Garrett Family Football. And, you know, before we even get started, I just want to thank all of our sponsors and our partners for making these events possible. All of your contributions help our soldier coaches find opportunities coaching within their communities, and it just means the world to us. And, you know, tonight is so special because there is a clip that exists, a video clip, and it might be regarded as one of the most exciting football drives in history. And, you know, there's an old adage, right? We Look, we all love the NFL. We've all coached in the NFL here, and, and, and it's, it's super exciting. But there is a wonderful, high-caliber level of football that's not on ESPN every single day, right? You're talking about the Ivies. You're talking about the Patriot Leagues. You're talking about the MAC conferences. Like, football is football. And it, what's even more exciting is we have Jason Garrett, John Garrett, and Judd Garrett, three brothers that had an opportunity to play football on the field in college together. So first and foremost, that's probably one of the rarest things that has ever happened, right? Then these three brothers come together and execute a game-winning drive in college for the Princeton Tigers. And we're gonna show this game-winning drive and we're gonna have these legends in football talk about what was going on, what was the energy, Maybe, maybe Jason even remembers what the play call was on, on some of these instances, but you're going to see how exciting it is. Uh, so for everyone who doesn't know, we have Jason Garrett, who's currently the offensive coordinator for the New York Giants. We have John Garrett, who's currently the head coach for the Lafayette Leopards. And we have Judd, and Judd has coached 23 seasons in the NFL, last 11 years uh, for the Dallas Cowboys as the director of pro player personnel. And he also hosts our Thursday night football breakdown at Soldiers of the Sidelines. So this is legendary, legendary football right now. So real quick, uh, Jason, introduce yourself to the, to the group. Say hi. Hey, guys. I'm Jason Garrett. It's good to be here. Awesome. John. How you doing, everyone? I'm John Garrett, and it's great to be here, too. So just look at John's background, because in the background at his college is Lafayette 20, Lehigh 13. So this is just another instance where one of the Garrett's are beating um, the, the Lehigh. And Judd, want to say hi? Hey, guys. How you doing? Thanks for showing up tonight. Um, it's great to be here, as always. Okay, so let's kick the film. I don't know when the last time y'all have seen this, but... Look at the quality. I mean, this is 1988 in its finest. So real quick, set the stage. It's the last drive, all right? Jason is the quarterback at wearing number 17. Judd is the running back wearing number 40. And John is a wide receiver wearing number 22. So Jason, you want to set the stage for us right now if you can remember what happens on this last drive of Lehigh? Yeah, I wish I remember the details, but the essence of it is we needed a game-winning field goal at the end of the game to, to, to win the game. And we got the ball. We were backed up in our minus territory and, you know, not the most ideal situation. But, you know, somehow, some way, we got the ball moving a little bit. And then at the end of this thing, it worked out well for us. Yeah, it, it sure did. And this was at a time before the air raid offense was created. So you're going to notice some – interesting formations that you probably haven't seen since 1988. <laughs> so, uh, John, what were you thinking at this moment? Do you remember what the feeling was taking the field as a wide receiver, knowing, you know, this is going to probably come down to you too? Well, I, I remember Lehigh when they had the ball, running the ball very effectively. And then once they, and it looked like they were going to run out the clock. And once they passed the 50 yard line, they, they decided to throw it. And so they threw a bomb, and Dean Kane made his the third interception of the game uh, on the on the three yard line. And we get the ball back with about I think it was just over two minutes left. And like, oh my gosh, we're going to get another chance here. Uh, so uh, we we get the ball on the, the two yard line. I don't know what play this is right here, but. Uh, at some point, it was back there on the two. Oh, it gets back there. That's probably why Jason doesn't remember the details of this game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, we just we just all gave it a shot, and uh, we're able to execute ball plays uh, and and move it down the field. 
Hey, Judd, can you just remind the audience who Dean Kane is, who intercepted this ball to set up the situation? Yeah, Dean Kane went on to Superman on that series, Lois and Clark. And um, he's still in Hollywood making movies. Uh, great guy, great athlete, and also a great volleyball player as well. So, um, and I think he was in camp with the Bills for a while. So uh, he was a good football player. Folks, you can't make this up. Superman intercepts the ball with no like less than two minutes left, all timeouts to come back and, and win this drive. I mean, the score right now is Princeton 13, Lehigh 15, backed up. Remember, no air raid. So here we go. We're taking the field. I believe this is first down. And it gets us, you can see REC got backed up. 1980s film work here. Oh my gosh, who is this? Look at this. So, Jason, do you remember what this play was called? Yeah, you know, we used to run these little uh, option routes out of the backfield. We used to call it a choice route. And so that's Judd right there, number 40. And I think when you're in these situations, all you're really – and that was one of the, the plays that we ran a lot. We felt like regardless of what they were going to play, we could come back and get a completion and get the ball moving and get away from our own go pulse. There you go. So Judd, now, now are you like, okay, it, it's time to carry this team here. So you're the first option in this comeback here. Yeah, well, what happens is you'll see it a lot in the NFL today that, you know, a lot of these two minute drives are driven by the, the, the little check downs and underneath stuff to the running backs. I mean, the defenses are gonna play soft coverage. They're gonna take away the downfield throws so if you're patient with the quarterback and dump it off to the back, you can get some nice yards. I mean, we used to do that with, with Dunbar all the time at the Cowboys. So um, this is all we're doing, taking what the defense has given us right now. So I, I would be remiss if I didn't bring this up because uh, John gave a great presentation to our soldier coaches before on the dip and slip. What do you, John, how would you coach your brother Judd <laughs> in this situation here? Uh, well, he, he did the right thing. He caught it. He Field. There were two defenders there. He, his pads were low, and he protected the ball and uh, didn't didn't fight for extra yards, which is critical in a two-minute situation uh, because certainly time is more important than yards uh, when you're in a two-minute situation at the end of the game. Yeah, so we're still backed up here. It looks like the ball's on the 12, maybe the 13 at best, and we line up and, and like look at this formation. I mean, 21 personnel. We have an inline, an attached tight end. And this is like kind of wing T. What'd you guys call this? The Was this the Jacks, Queens, and King sets in the backfield? Is that what you guys used to call this? I don't, I don't even You're actually remember. Right. You're actually right with the roots of this thing. You know, the the, the offense, the head coach, uh, the guy by the name of Ron Rodgers came from Delaware. Yeah. And that's a wing T. Uh, backfield set. So, Judd, are you lined up at the full back or the halfback position? Are you behind the center or? I'm, I'm at the halfback position in the two point stance. Uh, you know, fr from the from the wing T roots, that was sort of what they did is that they had the halfbacks in the two point stance and the fullback in the three point stance. Yeah. So it's like the it, what it is. It's the wing who's motioned or orbited already to get to this backfield, essentially, right? Yeah, that. essentially. Yep. Okay. So now here, it's important to know that Judd is the one in the two point stance. Because protection 83. Do you guys remember who number 83 was? Yeah, Jeff Baker. Yeah, yeah. Je Jeff was a good receiver. Uh, got us got us a first down right there and uh, he's a good player, good hands could run. Uh, was big and athletic. Yeah, he winds up stopping the clock too, uh, which we know is super important. Okay, so here um, we got first down now. We take the field. I think uh, Jason lost inter internet connection real quick, but he'll be back with us if he can get back in. So we're in the same set. Oh my gosh. So who's in pass pro here blocking the left edge for Jason? That's Jerry Santillo. I mean, he's the fullback. You know, you know, looking at this, 
you know, to, to, to step the to step the left tackle down to block the B gap and then put put your fullback on your defensive end probably wouldn't be done today. Uh, although it was done a lot back in the eighties, um, you know, before you had the, you know, what we know as you know, true two minute type formations and and protection. So we got a fullback on a defensive end, which probably isn't the wisest thing in the world. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, Jason makes a heck of a play here. Um, you know, they're actually blitzing, it looks like, and he's fading away and throws a dime to you, Judd. And you, <laughs> wow. So what are you thinking there, Judd? You're catching this ball, right? You're at the far hash when you catch this ball. What are you thinking here? Well, I'm just trying to get as much as I can and get out of bounds. I mean, that's that, that's sort of the name of the game. You don't want to... You don't want to get caught in bounds trying to gain one or two extra yards and then you lose 20, 25 seconds of time. So get what you can get and get out of bounds. Yeah, great job. And as uh, Jason comes back in, he, he missed it when we were just giving him compliments on this unbelievable out throw to the field while under duress. So not really changing up the formation much. Oh boy. So this might be one of the reasons. Penalty there, and the ball is back on the 12. Yeah. Yeah. Penalty, ball is back on the 12, and then this gets worse. Oh. And so it doesn't look too good, Harrison. It, this, this is not looking good right now. <laughs> Jason, this but, but is why it, you might not be able to remember the, all of the details here. But uh, you want to defend yourself in this instance? Is he with us? I don't know. Uh, I think he's still trying he to make it. Um, but, but but the one, one thing I get to, to go back to it. I mean, you, you know, we're putting we're putting a fullback on a defensive end in space that beats him on an up and under move. I mean, that's that that that's tough to do, right? Yeah. The guy has thirty five on him, but he's a defensive end. Um, in in present day football, we'd kick the left tackle out on him. And that fullback would be just chip help. But, you know, like I said, this is 1987. So it's a, it's a whole different philosophy. Yeah. And yeah, that tackle really isn't, he's looking for work right now. Yeah. Okay. Boom. Sack. Not what you want to have happen inside a minute and a half. So now it is second down and. 30, I believe it's second and 30 and you're on your own five yard line. Oh, same protection. Yep. <laughs> I, I think this is, good, this is a good play from Jay, uh, by Jason. I mean, just to get the ball thrown um, and, and avoid, avoid a sack, avoid a, you know, a uh, grounding penalty in the end zone, which would be a safety. I mean, j j just, to, just to salvage this play and get an incompletion uh, was a great job. And John, what are you thinking here? Um, are you lined up at the bottom of the screen here? Yeah, uh -huh. and um, you know, what you're thinking is, in order for these two minute situations to work, uh, the number one thing you need to do is your team needs to believe they can go down and score and win. And my recollection was that, that I had that belief. I had the, the belief in the quarterback, belief in Judd, belief in the offensive line, the other receivers. And, and yeah, we faced some challenges, but I, I, I really felt that we were going to get on track, execute ball plays and, and go down and score. Uh, so, and I think we all did. And, and that's what happens in the end. It does. And look, the, the routes are being run. I mean, also, Jason does a great job throwing this ball off his back foot. And this literally could have been completed. And it's probably better off, Judd, that you didn't catch this ball. Yeah, I'd like to say I dropped it on purpose. So <laughs> <laughs> but I, don't, I can't remember what, what, whether I did or didn't. So but we'll just say I did. Okay, so it is now third and 28. All right, uh, or third and 30, we're still third and 30. 
Oh, Jason's trying to get back in here. Let's see if we can pick him up. Jason, say something if you're with us. So third, I believe it says third and 28. Princeton's down 15-13. You're on your own five-yard line. Wait, who's that? That's Judd. Yeah, number 40. So, John, you want to take this time to coach it, coach up, coach us up? Yeah, yeah. so, uh, again, Judd, Judd was a, a really talented receiver out of the backfield, hard for, for guys to cover him. So, here is the philosophy is good because they're just trying to – we're just trying to get yards to cut the distance in half. So, we have a – we know it's a four down – so we can get to fourth and manageable. And Jace gets the ball out of his hands. Uh, Judd's open. And then Judd makes a, a good run after catch, avoiding a defender, uh, securing the ball, and getting must, as much as he can uh, without struggling for extra yards. Uh, so he's able to get it within striking distance for, uh, for fourth down. Yeah, that's exactly right. And the, the protection works here. Jason, do you remember what this protection was while you're trying to get back in on your internet connection? We were remembering that, uh, you know, protections were different in the eighties and we are, we have running backs one-on-one -on -one with free running defensive ends. And you took a couple big hits before I think your internet went out on purpose. So you didn't have to watch this again. Uh, but here it happens. Can you talk us through this instance? Hey, Harrison, I was a little disappointed. I felt like I was gone for like a half an hour and I came back and we still were on the same yard line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that, it, it's what happened. Uh, you, 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 you said it. Uh, so, sometimes those matchups aren't the ones that you necessarily want. I think the fullback's Jerry Santillo and Jerry does a good job blocking that defensive end, but typically you want the big guys on the big guys. And, uh, Unfortunately, we didn't have it in this case, but like Johnny said, Judd was always a pretty reliable guy to get the ball to. And, you know, in these third down situations, oftentimes you just want to make it fourth and manageable. And that's what we're able to do here. Yeah. So I wanted to tune the audience's attention to this orange circle, who is a, uh, he's a tight end and the tackles inside here as well. And these guys really aren't blocking anybody. And the running back is one on one with the defensive end who just had two sacks. So, yeah. but but he 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 figures it out. And uh, hey, hey, in, all, in all defense, when I went to the Philadelphia Eagles in 1990, when they would play the Giants, they would put they would put the fullback Anthony Tony on Lawrence Taylor. So that oh. was sort of what. <laughs> I don't know how many sacks Lawrence Taylor had from beating. Uh, he's a great player, obviously, but beating fullbacks because the blocking schemes weren't what they are today. And in all fairness, if you had the entire Philadelphia Eagles slide protect to Lawrence Taylor, he still probably would have got the sack. <laughs> yeah, no, no question. <laughs> so anyway, what a wonderful catch and run after the catch. That's a little bit of the dip and slip there, John. Yeah, pretty close. That's the dip and slip. Okay. <laughs> 13, 15, fourth and eight on your own 26. It looks like we have a minute and four seconds left here. All right, this is do or die. This is the football game right here. Jason, do you, what are you thinking in the huddle here? Do you, you got your team. Oh, you're, you're muted, coach. Sorry, guys. Um, I think the biggest thing you're, you're trying to do here is you, ha you have to be aware of pressure. So if they come after you, what's your answer? And can your answer make a first down for you? So I think that's the first thing you're thinking about. And then the other, the other piece of this thing is just kind of reminding everybody that it's not ultimate Frisbee, that you know if we throw it in front of the change, we gotta go make the first down. So just the awareness of the first down depth, it's fourth and eight. If we throw it at six, you gotta go get this thing. The biggest thing you want to do is make sure that you give yourself a fighting chance. So handle the pressure, 
and then and then know where the sticks are and go make it. Yeah. So here's John right here. You getting the play there, John? Yeah, I can. I, I, <laughs> I can, I'm looking for a spot in between those orange helmets so I can look into the eyes of the quarterback and hear because in the huddle you hear with your eyes and your ears. <laughs> so sometimes is- Harrison get those guys who are kind of. You know, they're to themselves. They're not always in the huddle. They're, you know, they need special attention. But you know how that works. For sure. Now, honestly, you guys, tight bond as brothers, fourth and eight to win this game. Are you guys leaning on each other? Like, Jason, are you thinking about Judd and John and John and Judd? Are, are you, is, it, is, is this like a, a special moment for you guys? Well, the, the only thing I'd say about the only thing I'd say about it is obviously I've thrown a ridiculous number of footballs to John and Judd, so there's a, there's a comfort level that I have with those guys. But at the same time, you know whether it's Doug Strzokman or Mark Rockefeller at tight end or Jeff Baker at the other receiver, you know those are guys we spend a lot of time with too. So you know the, the, there, there's a confidence level across the board to throw to any one of these guys. Uh, but obviously, there's a lot of time on task with Johnny and Judd, and I'm really comfortable throwing those the ball to these guys, and particularly in this kind of a situation. Well, it shows up. I think only one ball was thrown to someone not named Garrett on this drive. There he is. What a catch for the first. Okay, John. What are you thinking right here? Your number is called. Uh, well, what it was, it was it was two back slot, and we and we ran what what a lot of teams call uh, X hook, where you take the number two receiver uh, through the seam and just run curl flat with uh, Judge running the flat part from the backfield, and I'm just running basic curl. It's a uh, it's a concept that's been around football for, for many years. And, you know, it's real good versus single high defense and it's real good versus quarters coverage as well. Uh, so uh, Jace just read it off that flat defender and uh, the flat defender went out with the, with the flat route and uh, the curl route was open and uh, Jason delivered it right on the money and, and caught it just like we've done, like he said, countless amount of times in, in, in the practice and the work that we put in. Yeah. Incredible. So let's watch how this thing plays out. I mean, you run this at the perfect depth, you know, and it, it, it's an interesting situation here because, you know, you're always taught to come back to the football, but fourth and eight, it's like you're running a 10 yard route. So how much, are you coming back to the ball? You, you kind of like holding your ground here, John, and you're just going up and getting this thing. Was that on your mind? Like where the sticks are? Well, it's on your mind when you run your stem, you got to make sure your stem is deep enough to account for, uh, the opportunity to address the ball and, uh, and you, and you address the ball, uh, under control because the ball's coming to you and you, and you need to be able to adjust either way, if the ball's thrown to a shoulder or, or the other one. So uh, I think just by the depth of the stem, I knew I was able to get the first down and, and the, the design of the play. And Jason threw it on time, which is really important when you have a route like a curl route, so you don't come back too far and lose uh, the first down. Well, perfectly executed here. So now as we're coming, back to the line of scrimmage can you feel an energy shift here judd like how does it feel now you just got that first down you were backed up at the five yard line your own five and now it's like we're gonna go win this game how how are you feeling judd yeah i mean there i mean first of all we're probably exhausted because it was a long game and and (laughs) this is a two-minute drive but we're digging ourselves out of out of bad situation for about the last five or six plays and you know, obviously the the third and thirty, and then ended up converting the fourth and eight. Now you feel, hey, now we got a fresh set of downs. Now we can do it, do something. Midfield is only ten yards away. Field goal range is is a couple first downs away. So we're we're feeling pretty good right now. Uh, once we made that first down. 
Yeah, and you guys know I'm a defensive-minded football coach, right? And I think in this situation after what just happened and Princeton coming back and getting this first down, the defense, I'm running a two-deep shell, and I'm triple covering everyone named Garrett. That's what I'm doing. Three on it. Whatever happens, those guys aren't touching the ball. And it's tough because Jason gets the snap. Oh. Jason, talk us through this moment. Not very good by me. Um, obviously, in these situations, you don't want to take sacks. So uh, I don't know what was going on down the field, but you can't, you can't take pitches and, and take a sack in this situation. But, you know, one of the sneaky things about college football is when you make first downs, the clock stops. When you get sacked, the clock stops. So you have all these different advantages that can keep you going. But this is pretty inexcusable for a quarterback in this situation to do what I did. But, you know, I think the theme of this drive is you can, you kind of just keep battling to go to the next play. So that's what we had to do here. It's a bad play by me. Well, we have to definitely take notice of the toughness and the grit you have here. This is a solid shot. And this could have been a lot worse, but you you remain with possession of the football. So that's huge. And you're back in the huddle. Here it is, you know, commanding the offense. So it's not over. And, you know, I think – you know, thank God the rules of football have changed to make everything safer. But this is like a pastime that I hope some of the younger folks can remember the grit to take a shot like that, get back into the huddle and still try to win this game. Yeah, it's a nice, good to take in the sack. <laughs> yeah. And that's how you know uh, you're going to become an offensive coordinator because you just can't let go of that. Unbelievable. And here you are. Do you remember this play, Jason? What a play. Judd, John, talk to us about this. I think Jason lost a little bit of internet. But look at the – look at – Well, the, the, the one thing when I've talked to people about this drive who were there at the game, whether it's teammates or coaches, you know, one of the images they have is – is Judd dragging people out of bounds, and this is this is one of the well, this is one of the plays. He runs an option route out of the backfield, and and Jace puts it on the money. But he's he's got a long way to go to get to the sidelines and and preserve a timeout and uh, and save time. And this is a great effort by him after the catch, knowing where he was and knowing what he had to do uh, to get out of bounds. Uh, and this is one of the this is one of the, the the great memories because later on he has a similar play as well on the other sideline where he does a great job of getting out of bounds and, and preserving the clock. For sure. And, you know, Jason keeps losing internet connection every time I'm about to give him a compliment, but a big thing in football for me as a coach is body language, especially when we're facing adversity and Jason has great poise and confidence in his body language. And so does the rest of the team. It looks like you three are, are really aggressive and confident. Watch everyone take the line of scrimmage here, All right? This is a confident football team right now after taking a pretty big sack. Yeah, it, it goes back to what I said earlier is that we all believed we could do it. We all had uh, tremendous faith in Jason as the, as the leader and our quarterback. Uh, and, you know, we had, we had a lot of guys that could make plays, uh, Jeff Baker, the other receiver, Mark Rockefeller, and uh, and struck at tight end, and Judd out of the backfield, and and the line protecting, and Jerry Santillo, the fullback, battling uh, like crazy, trying to protect, and and uh, you know gave Jason time to be able to deliver the ball, and and uh, catching it on the on the other end. So there was a there was a belief uh, because we knew we could do it. And uh, this is a very interesting call with the. What, the, what they do is they go formation into the boundary, under split the X receiver, and just run like a curl flat. You know, if you, if you, if you break the perimeter, it could, it could be a, a big play. So, um, you know, it, it's very interesting. Uh, again, I, I've been in the NFL for, for a long time, not, not in college, but the use of the hash marks this way uh, is it, a, a very good call. 
it is a very good call. And maybe somebody in the in the booth was watching. The linebackers are staying in the box. There is no time left on this clock right now. And this, you know, I have to I have to draw this. This linebacker right here, I mean, this guy's like almost in a 30, maybe a 40 at this moment. He's got all this field. He he should just widen out. Like this is the great defensive set to run this play. Offensively. Yeah, and here well, it is. happens, and Judd alluded to it, with, if, if Lehigh was a field defense um, and you, know, you, you put formation into the boundary, they don't generally adjust. They just go to where they <laughs> go. So, so there's more guys over here, um, and then, or, or they may, they may not be. They may have just put the coverage into the boundary instead of the field. Uh, so you can't tell from a, if you don't have a wide angle, uh, but, but certainly uh, there's a lot of space out there to the field and we took advantage of it. Yeah, this was schemed up. This was a, this was a good job. This is awesome. So let's, let's run this now. We got to make a play. Oh my gosh, Judd. Talk us through this. This is an unbelievable catch and play. What are you thinking? What are you trying to do? Well, first, first off, it's, it's a great throw. You know, the ball placement is so essential to a receiver with run after catch. If you can, if you can put it on the receiver where he catches it in stride and just can keep running, that, that's the Joe Montana, Jerry Rice deal all the time. You're almost handing it to him. So being able to catch it in full stride allowed me to turn the corner. And then at that point, I was doing whatever I could to get out of bounds because I knew, I don't know how many timeouts we had at this point, but I knew if we had any, we're trying to preserve timeouts. Or if you don't have any, we're trying to stop the clock. So that, that, that's what we're trying to get done. And I would say this, Jason, this throw might have what got you picked up in the NFL. This is a long throw. Yeah, you know, it's one of the things, you're, when you watch this, you remember how different college football, pro football. I mean, you throw this, you know, two thirds of the way across the field for a gain of five yards. And like you said, it is a long throw, but you know, I, the, the theme of the whole thing, is try to keep the ball moving. And Judd was always such a good option on it and gave me a place to throw it. And, you know, there was a, a really good awareness on his part to get himself out of bounds and stop the clock because you manage that part of the two minute stuff, whether you're making first downs or getting out of bounds, you just give yourself so much more time to run more plays. Absolutely. And here it is. Now you got a flow situation. So is this the same play, uh, John and Jason for four? Is this seam curl flat? Uh, it, it is, I believe so. It's the same as the fourth and eight call. Um, so there's Judd running the running the flat, and uh, he outflanked the flat defender, and Jason ran it right and uh, threw it to him. Uh, so it's it's a it's a good read, like Jason said. Got the ball out of his hands, uh, put it one foot in front of the the numbers, allowing Judd to maximize his yards after the catch. My memory, but without seeing the end of this thing, is I think we got a little bit of a break here. Uh, they're still complaining about this in Lehigh, whether or not Judd got out of bounds before, before he got to the sidelines, whether or not he was tackled. Oh, I think, they yeah. stopped. <laughs> I, think I think that ref is a Princeton alum. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, so they stopped the clock there. What does that say? 29 seconds? First and 10. Seven, I think. 27. 47. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So I think all we're doing is throwing 35 yard out routes on frozen ropes here. That's what this drive is. Oh. And, and, and I think this formation wasn't even in in our playbook and, and it was 
it was just made up in the huddle, just line up wider and get to the flat. I think that's what I was told. So that, that's sort of what I did. Well, Jason, what about this protection here? Yeah, you know, it's the same issue having. Um, but but like we talked earlier, in the, all these situations, the biggest thing you got to be aware of is are they bringing pressure? And as a quarterback, if you can build in some quick answers, it's going to give you a chance. And that's really what we did. You know, my memory of all this is that we we're kind of reading it down to up. So get back quickly. If you have the short throw, take it, keep the ball moving. And, you know, Judd was that short option on most of these plays and pretty reliable receiver and we're able to move the ball and handle some of this pressure they were bringing. Wow. It's incredible. What a throw under duress, Chase. This is, this is an outstanding throw. I'm sure you don't like to give yourself compliments, but blindside and someone affecting you in your face to be able to deliver this ball. Wow, Judd, that's great speed. So did you have a timeout here, John? Is, is this really, or was there not? Uh, you know, I, I don't think we did. Um, I think Judd realized that he got the first down already. And if he, if he tries to go out of bounds there, you know, that guy can, that guy can hold him up because he had the angle. So I believe he did the right thing of just trying to, to get up field, knowing that the, the clock would stop. Yeah. On the first down. So now here, now we're on the plus 31. It looks like. Yes. Plus 31. John, was that you catching this? It was. Uh, so uh, this was into the boundary, and it was just the sideline route with Judd underneath it as a check down. And, you know, if you, if you watch Jason, he just holds on his back foot uh, a, a little bit because he, he knows that it's going to come open, uh, that, the, that the guy clamped down on Judd and he had a, an opportunity to throw it uh, to the receiver rather than the check down and uh, was able to complete it. And, you know, we don't have any timeouts. It was ruled out of bounds uh, or maybe a first down. So you see the officials uh, you know, waving the clock to stop, giving us time to run the field goal team out there. Yes. So, Jason, what is happening? Let's talk about just the game situation here, right? We get the first down. What is happening on the sideline? And what are you telling everybody after delivering this ball? Well, we, we, had, we had a hell of a kick. Rob Goodwin was our kicker and Brian Barron was the holder. And their whole operation was really pretty clean. But, you know, you're on the 31. You know, whatever that is, it's, let's call it a 48. -year well, there's nothing automatic about that for, for anybody anywhere. So we felt like we needed to get closer. As Johnny said, you know, you can stop the clock by getting out of bounds. You can stop the clock by making first down. So we felt like we needed more yards. It looks like they clamped Judd. And again, kind of reading it down to up. You're trying to throw it to Judd, and then you just kind of work through it. And Johnny was open and made the play a good contested catch. And then you know, once you get to the 20 or so, you say, okay, we got to make this one. And don't know exactly how much time we had left, but I know we're right down to the wire. And let's give Goody a chance to kick it and uh, trust Brian Barron to have the soft hands to get the ball down. And, and uh, again, hopefully it'll be a good outcome. It turned out well for us. Yes, sir. There's, 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 there's a great shot. You know, Jason alluded to Brian Barron. He was the backup quarterback. He understands all these situations. He's telling the line to get down, get ready, because he knows as soon as when they pull the, you know, as soon as when they blow the whistle, the clock's going to start. So there he is right there telling everybody to get down. You know, we can't waste any time after the referees, you know, whistle into play because there's probably less than five seconds left right now. Yeah. And this thing has to happen. Like, I, I just want to turn it. Just so Baron wasn't exactly. 
he, he was an executive of Procter and Gamble for 25 years, and now he's the president of the Cleveland Indians. So, <laughs> guy. <laughs> Just so you guys know, that's what happens when you play football at Princeton. This is what, <laughs> this is what everybody does. Um, hey, also, let's take a look at this guy right here. Man, he's been on the def- he's been on the field for you know, maybe a two minutes of game clock, but it seems like it might've been 30 minutes of actual chronological time. He is exhausted. Um, he comes here and fight. So John, being an active head coach right now, John, you know, what are you doing on the sideline to prepare for this, right? Is this a mayday situation where you have to have the field goal team ready to go? Oh, for sure. It's, it's, uh, you just try to stay ahead of it. Um, and you're constantly talking to the special team coach, uh, all the what if situations, what if we get tackled inbounds prior to the first down, um, it all starts with the kick line. What, what is the furthest distance that the kicker can comfortably make the kick? Um, and then if you get a first down, you know, you have some time, um, you also got to realize that you no longer have a timeout to save for the field goal. So you have to know how much time is left. It's about 16 seconds uh, that you can run the team out there and, and kick it successfully with a running clock. But as Judd pointed out, they rolled it a first down. You can see them moving the chains, but the ball is going to be snapped on the, on the, on the ready. So uh, as soon as he, he pulls the chain, so to speak, the clock's going to run. So everybody's got to be set. The holder's got to be ready with the cadence and the kicker's got to be ready to, uh, uh, to execute. So uh, it worked out perfectly in that situation. And again, kudos to, to Brian Barron for orchestrating it. So for all the aspiring head coaches out there right now, write this situation down in your situation playbook to make sure we start covering this in training camp so that when you get to this moment, we understand how May Day works. Now, I want to put this out to Facebook and to everybody else watching and the brothers Garrett. Who do you think is the most important yet unsung coach in this situation? The guy who gets no love ever, but is super critical right now. The center. <laughs> the center. Look, the center is super important. But the guy that never gets love in this situation is the get back coach. Oh yeah, that's right. Who's the guy on the sideline making sure that no that you know everyone's not running on the field just yet? Get back coach has to show up in this moment. And and, and that, that guy's job also is to make sure that we have eleven. We don't have twelve. We don't have 10, but we have 11. You see, you saw the one guy running off late. Someone had to alert them that, hey, we got 12 on the field, get them off the field. That, that You could lose a game that way very easily. Very easily. And I think the other part about the tear is hopefully with your staff, you've rehearsed this enough and you have a chain of command enough that, you know, I know as a head coach, you're saying, do we have 11? Do we have 11 and you hear 58 different people in your headset saying we got it or we don't, or we got 12. So making sure the chain of command is right, that you have one guy who you can count on to be poised and who can count well, can count to 11 and, uh, and make sure that part of it's right. Cause that can be a disaster. If you do all that hard work to not have the right number of guys on the field. And this is where it helps to be on Princeton sideline. Because this guy is counting and has it totally in check. Did a hell of a job. The legendary figure, Brian Barron. <laughs> okay, get down, get down. Clock starts. Oh my gosh, that thing would have been good from 55. Goody had a heck of a leg. Oh my gosh. And look at this rush. They got the double edge here. Unbelievable operation du- under duress. We're going to let this play out because this is my favorite part. 
Look at that stadium. I, what did this feel like, guys? What, what's going on right now in your minds? Well, that was a hell of a feeling. You know, you don't get those feelings very often, but, um, you know, probably like a lot of things in life, when, you, when you've had to work hard for it, the feelings of satisfaction are so much better when things work out. So we certainly had to work hard for it on that drive. And that was a great moment, very memorable, and happened a long, long time ago, but it's still uh, etched in our memory uh, pretty strongly. You know, guys, this is why I'm so grateful that y'all came on this show tonight to, to speak about this because this is what sports is all about. And honestly, these, these moments are priceless. And you guys as family, as brothers, got to share this moment. And it is so rare and so priceless. And if everybody else is watching, hopefully y'all feel the way I do where this is, this is so heartwarming. Well, to echo what Jason said, you can just see the, the elation, uh, the joy, uh, and that feeling of satisfaction. And, uh, you know, there, there's, there's a little bit of pandemonium, too, because, you know, you, you're, you're looking for Goody. He's running away from you. Everybody's trying to hug him. Uh, you're, trying to, you're trying to see everybody else who contributed and coaches and, and all that. So you just... You're just, just trying to share the victory and uh, the joy of it with everybody. Wow. So I'm going to stop share now for a sec. So I want to turn the mic over to each one of you guys and just, you know, say, say a few words to each other, um, you know, as, as brothers and, you know, you're sharing your appreciation for that moment. So, so Judd, is there anything you want to tell the audience and, and tell your brothers after reliving this moment? Yeah, I mean, j just watching that, I mean, uh, I got sent that video yesterday or two days ago, so I've watched it a couple times. It just brings back unbelievable memories. I mean, you alluded to it as well. I mean, when when you play college football, high school football, whatever level you're at, you always feel like your your teammates are kind of your brothers, but I think it's even more special when they actually are your brothers. It, it, it's a it's it's a whole other level of connection um and then being able to be in the same huddle together uh and then do something like like we just saw there uh again that, that that's a whole nother level well said john you want to reflect well it, it's you know we've been a part of football a long long time and uh there's there's nothing more rewarding than uh accomplishing something uh, from that shared commitment, that shared commitment as a team, that shared commitment as an offense, that shared commitment as, as friends, as brothers, to, to know you put in all this work and you're able to, to reap some of the benefits with a, a, a great come from behind, hard fought uh, victory that is a, it's an everlasting memory. And, uh, uh, and then to me personally, the ironic thing is that it was against Lehigh, which is now our arch rival. And, and anytime, anytime uh, you can beat Lehigh, it's a very satisfying thing. Uh, and, uh, um, and, that, and that's, what, that's what I remember is just all the hard work, the guts, determination, the fight, scratch, claw in that last drive of everybody given it all they got uh, to accomplish something really special. And uh, it's, a, it's an everlasting memory that uh, everyone shares. Um, and it's a, it's a really rewarding and very satisfying. And Jason, do you want to leave us with any words of reflection? Yeah, I think both Judd and Johnny said it, said it really well. I mean, I, sh I echo their sentiments. But, you know, something my dad used to always say uh, that, that I, I think about a lot is he said, you know, some of his greatest memories in sports are when he got ready for the game in the backseat of a car on the way to the game, whether it was a, a summer baseball league game or a semi-pro game or whatever it is. And, and, and those memories and, 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 and those experiences are just as valid as, you know, whether he's part of a, you know, a scouting department that wins a Super Bowl. 
And, and, and so, so to me, one of the memories when you pull back and you, you show the, the, uh, the pandemonium, as Johnny said, after we kicked the game winning field goal, the crowd, there wasn't that big of a crowd, right? The, the stadium held 50,000 people. I don't know how many were there, 15, 20 at the most, you know? And, but, but you know, the, that memory that you just shared with us is one of my favorite memories in any sports endeavor I've ever been a part of. You know, from CYO football all the way up to, to the NFL. And, and so Johnny said it, the shared commitment, the, the commitment that Johnny, Judd, and I have had to each other all through the years, the number of times we threw those routes in the backyard or at the playground or on the, on the high school field in our town, um, to, to all the other guys. You think about winter running that you're doing. And you, you're up at 5 o'clock in the morning, you're down in the gymnasium at 5.30, and you're doing all that stuff. That's what that pandemonium comes from, the, the commitment that you've all made to each other. And then you, you realize this and you have this special moment together. And literally, that was 1987. It's 2021. And we're talking 34 years ago. You know, and we're recounting these plays like they happened yesterday. So, I mean, certainly these experiences have a big impact on you. And I think I can speak for Johnny and Judd. We're just so fortunate to have been a part of that. Yeah, well said. And you know, I just thank you guys so much for sharing this memory with all of us and, and me included. I mean, I, this is, I feel like I'm a part of it now and it, it reminds us all the power and the value of sports and, and football in particular. It's just, it's so special. And as we get into the off season right now, all three of you guys are, are preparing for another season coming up here in the fall and, you know, that's it. That's the memory. That's, that's why we're doing it. And again, just cannot thank you enough for, for letting in us in, letting us in, in such a special moment. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Harrison. Appreciate it. Harrison, that's a great way about you, man. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I just want to thank all of our sponsors and donors and everybody who's contributed to support our soldier coaches and our mission of helping our service members and veterans become expert character based coaches to continue to serve their country as a coach. And uh, hopefully we're going to create thousands and thousands and thousands of more moments like this. I hope everybody has a great night. Bye everyone. Harrison, take care. Bye now.